You are listening to Gorgas, you idiot. <laughs> I've been really into uh, card games and turn-based RPGs. Yeah, it's uh, locking in. Are we going? Are we going? All oh, right, fuck yeah. Uh, yeah, turn-based RPGs has been saying my life lately. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude, I never liked those. Well, turn-based, I like the turn-based ones, like the old Final Fantasy games. Yeah, but it, but the it, it's the real-time strategy games I couldn't get into. Yeah, yeah turn-based. Which pretty... one? Wait, what's considered real-time strategy? I think that's like Civilization and games like that. Oh, uh, yeah, no, it's basically as long as it's a game, is you can sit there and like try to figure out what the best decision for your next move is. Mm-hmm. That's like my favorite game. <laughs> it's like chess. You yeah. take turns. I can't and like I need very uh very direct um uh paths to do. Like, you know, when you hop into like Elden Elden Rim. Wait, Elden Ring. Elden Ring. Yeah. So I was playing Elden Rim. Rim. I was trying to play Rim World. That's why it was in my head. <laughs> <laughs> when you uh like when you play Elden Ring, like there is sort of like a vague plot, but it's also like you could do whatever you want. And then also, like, I was watching this thing on Elden Ring. There's apparently this one area of the game, like, right in the beginning. If you don't just randomly take a right at the very beginning of the game and you don't go into this one area, you can't access it the rest of the game. Like, if you go past that and do whatever the next thing is... And, like, stuff like that stresses me out. And the people that make those games are such assholes, Oh, dude. they're such fucking <laughs> they're dickheads. Just, they're, like, they're, it's, they're almost like the fucking, they're like Jigsaw. They just want to torture yeah. people. Well, and it's just, it's just frustrating because, like, um, like, I saw this one thing in the, the, like, I knew Elden Ring and games like that weren't for me when, like, the first boss was taking me. I never yeah. beat him. But the first boss, when you get to that bridge, was taking me, like, a On million. On Bloodborne? No, in oh, uh, Elden Ring. Must bro. be the same. Bloodborne, and, well, that was can the same thing you, for me. Can I tell you when I quit Bloodborne? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, dude. It might have been around the same time I quit it. Bro, literally, like, the first area, I was. it was taking me forever to get outside of, like, the first fucking area. I get past the first area. I'm, like, messing around in this courtyard. I get into this fight. I'm finally learning the controls. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I get into a fight where I have, like, just the tiniest bit of health left. And I was like, well, you got through. So let's just do, like, let's just walk around. And then I see, like, a church or a cathedral or some shit. And the second I walk in there, a fucking, um, what's a big, like, wolf monster? A werewolf Yeah, thing. a werewolf just comes out of nowhere and is just like, dickhead, <laughs> and fucking kills me yeah. and sends me back all the way. And I'm like, I hate this fucking and game. And you gotta go, like, retrieve your soul and fucking start all the way over. I, go, I hate this fucking game. Like, I was talking to uh, Nate, and I have some friends like Nate and them who, they'll just they'll just be like, yeah, I love, I love those games where you get every five inches, you get bodied, and then you learn how to do it. And, like, the game forces you to be, like, elite at it. Right. Until you really do. And I'm like, dude, those games drive me up a fucking wall they're so like masochistic yeah you know what i mean but is that the right is it sadistic or masochistic masochistic i I mean when you love when you love pain the games are sadistic you have to be a masochist that's what i mean yeah 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 it's like i need i need a little bit of a treat every couple (laughs) you need a little pavlov's dog yeah i just can't i need a little positive reinforcement exactly i can't just be kicked in the dick every five feet (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. I dude. fucking hate those games. I didn't even fuck with the Elden Ring game. I didn't even play it once. I I saw a bunch. I knew I wouldn't like it. I saw a bunch of people. Uh, I get well. I get hyped up over people getting hyped up. Mm-hmm. So when like Elden Ring came out, like Lamar and Nate and a bunch of boys in the Discord on panties, a bunch of boys in the Discord were going fucking nuts for it. And like I saw that, and I go, "You guys are having fun. I want to have that kind of fun like you're having." Yeah, <laughs> like, I'm a real, I'm a real guy who walks up to a conversation, and everyone's laughing. I go, "What are you guys talking about?" Yeah, I want to do that. I want to be a part of this. You're all smiling. Yeah, <laughs> and I got Elden, I got Elden Ring, and I cr- I was crushing it for like a week, and I'm like, I got. And then when I found out that boss on the bridge, when people are like, that's the easiest boss in the game. Yeah, you can miss me with that. I was like, yeah, I'm not for this. But then, um, yeah, w- what the fuck was it? I uh, So I, I this is where I realized I like turn-based strategy games. <laughs> is uh, It's kind of random, but go along with me. I'm, w- I'm with you. I, uh, I randomly, uh, not randomly, but I signed up for Instacart. Just to, like, have that as a thing to Mm -hmm. possibly make some money on the side. Oh, yeah, yeah. I did that for a while. Yeah. And I started doing it, and I did about three or four deliveries. And when I was done, I was like, 
did I have I, I think I had fun doing that. I was like, <laughs> why did I have fun doing Instacart? And I realized it's I'm my brain is very task driven. So it's like it's like Instacart pops up. They're like, you need to go to PetSmart. You need to get a pound of dog food. You need quests. To, you They're need giving to, you quests. Yeah, you need to bring it to fucking Kathy. And I'm like, I'm I'm there, Kathy. I, yeah, got, I got you, baby. You. I got you, baby. <laughs> and yeah. I'm just like, I it was just like crushing it. And I'm I like, can't find the right one. What kind of substitution do you want? Yeah. And I was just like, I got it. And I'm like, fuck yeah, I crushed that. Give me another one. And I'm like, just crushing them. And I realized it's like, yeah, I'm very task driven. And that's like what the kind of like turn-based rpgs are they're very directly like task driven mm -hmm. and when i play them it's like incredibly satisfying and i just have like i have like adhd brain uh i'm all over the fucking place and this is the recent thing that when i do it it like locks me in nice and then i'm like well that's good because i'm also into twitch streaming twitch.tv slash i'm also into <laughs> i'm also into twitch streaming so i was like oh, okay i can make this work for me yeah so yeah that's just been my uh my saving grace and also the fact that we're all like you do music and comedy and all that shit yeah. with us and stuff like that i'm around like just endless man childs so right. it's just like i was talking to mike eaton last night he was like dude you got to get the pokemon uh, <laughs> oh, yeah he was selling us on that yeah, at the house he's the other like, night. dude oh i was i was laughing too because he was like yeah i get the pokemon card game i go it's not out yet and he goes the fuck it is and he shows me on his phone and i was like oh no there's like a new version coming out in october so it's a card game video game it's basically the pokemon trading card game that we used phone. to play when we were yeah, kids but yeah. it's on your phone but there's a there's Shit. one it was funny i was two minutes late because i was trying to figure out my login for it <laughs> 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 and yeah, it's called Pokemon Training Guard Game Live, but they have like a new updated version coming out in like October. But yeah, it's just like it's so socially acceptable now because we're all to just be a man child and be into be into like uh, well, kid yeah. shit. We Disney all, adults? Or oh no, I'll kill myself before I'm a Disney <laughs> adult. Dude. No, just, I could see you at Disneyland, dude, having a good time. No, I mean, no, I've never been. Disneyland's fun. I like, or I guess I was at Disney World. Disneyland's in California, right? Yeah, I was at Disney World. Disney World's fun because they fucking beat those workers into like treating you like you're a star. <laughs> <laughs> they fucking beat them into submission. They're like they're on. But no, the uh, the Disney adults who make like and I honestly I think uh, uh, Mar the Marvel Bros definitely Marvel Bros bug me more than Disney adults. No, they actually are the they're they're neck and neck. Yeah, they're neck and neck. Well, the problem with Mar see Disney adults. I give them a minor pass because Disney adults just want to be left alone. And I get that, you know, being into, like, libertarian shit. So I'm a real big, like, yeah, dude, let me do my thing and leave me alone. <laughs> Disney adults don't push it in your face. Marvel adults will just show you a scene from Eternals, and they're like, have you seen a better scene in cin cinema? <laughs> and we're all sitting over here like... We've all seen No Country for Old Men and yeah, like good Goodfellas. Movies. What the fuck are you talking about, retard? Like, this is the best thing that ever happened <laughs> yeah. to modern American cinema. That, that's the thing is the problem with Marvel adults is they are obsessed with their and the the the, the and that's not I'm not talking about comic book fans. I'm talking the worst type of adult man is a dude who's only obsessed with Marvel <laughs> movies. Like you like dude, you're obsessed with the movies, but you've never seen the you've never read the comics or anything. Right. You started at the movies. Bro well, starting's fine. It's staying right. there. It's staying there. It's like you've never bought a comic. You've never watched X-Men the Animated. You're not even series. a real Marvel bro. Bro, you're just cause here's the You're thi a poser. The people don't fully under people are really good at identifying why shit sucks ass. But they're not good at breaking down why it sucks ass. And the problem, with, the problem with Marvel is not that like the Sony Marvel and shit where any like those movies both sucked. But the problem with Marvel now is they're trying to sell to uh, a worldwide marketplace. So they have to make a movie that China, India, America, right. Africa, fucking uh, England, uh, Russia, every country is okay with. Right. And it's just going to be the most bland sack of shit. Yeah. You know what? I mean? Well, I mean, I have fun with the Marvel movies, but don't do the whole like watch them in chronological or, or no uh, timeline order. 
because that will desensitize you because you'll start seeing the formula. Yeah. And you'll just be like, this shit sucks. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of how it was after the Avengers 2 for me. I was like, I'm done. I haven't watched anything since then, really. Yeah, I got about, I, I remember I broke I broke my pinky and I had two months off from work. So I tried to do. <laughs> sitting at home watching the fucking. Yeah, show. just with my pinky up. Damn, I want to oh watch superheroes. Watch, I wanted to get, I, I, that, well, that was the first time, that was the first time in a while I had that much time available during the day so i was like let's see if this is because i i don't take my problem is i don't take anyone's word for anything i'm the fucking yeah. i'm the fucking guy in the bible who jesus uh, jesus was like yo trust me and i'm the one taking <laughs> in the corner like fuck you dude prove it <laughs> <laughs> so i don't i don't take anyone's word on anything i gotta fuck so i like checked it out myself and then you just start to see like the form some of the earlier marvels were pretty good like early captain america's rip oh yeah 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 um, i did like those when they like inject him and he gets all buff yeah, yeah. actually cap I'll, I'll defend this captain marvel wasn't too bad that, i don't think i watched it that was the one with the uh the lady i, I forget it. her name brie larson um and that and i was like why are we because i remember everyone being so mad about captain marvel so i like looked it up i was like why is it, why was everyone so this movie's actually like pretty good i gotta give them it's like and also, too, I'm not super familiar with the comics. So just, like, as a movie, Captain mm -hmm. Marvel was pretty good. And so I, like, looked it up. And it was just when it was coming out, it was just endless interviews of Brie Larson just being annoying. Mm -hmm. And she was just being, like, a fucking know-it-all. She ruined the, pre she the press yeah. for it. Yeah, and people were, like, <laughs> people, were like this. people were like, you're so annoying that we're just going to bomb this. We're just going to fucking... The, bro the bros, this movie. the bros were bugging, dude. You can't, you can't bug the bros if you want them to come. No. The Marvel bros are your key demographic. You want whether there's tits in the movie or not. You yeah. gotta, you can't be, you can't bug the bros, dude. <laughs> dude no in the press, there's no tits in anything anymore. They and did, they did, they do be taking tits away from stuff, bro. That was like the worst downfall. That was the worst repercussions of GamerGate. Is what like, is Gamergate, dude? Gamergate. You have to educate me. You know so much stuff. That's why I have you here. I'm like, <laughs> I want to tap into like the tip of the iceberg of what you know. What I just don't. I get. I don't want to be out of the loop ever. <laughs> you have FOMO for like any information. Yeah. No, for real though. I don't want to like like if I'm listening to a podcast and a dudes are talking like if it's just a conversational podcast and i'm listening to it and dudes are talking about a thing i don't know i feel like a dickhead because i'm like oh i should know that it's like irrational <laughs> like i shouldn't i can't know everything <laughs> or can you or yeah, or can i yeah. <laughs> um no gamergate i don't know exactly what gamergate how it like started because it is like very all over the place and rocky but it was basically um it was like a lot of uh you know, fuck. I hate to use the term feminist and whatever because that's so like polarizing. But you know, just a lot of like, like a lot of like tattletales, or I, I like to call them hall monitors. You know, whenever there's like <laughs> there's people in the mix on a thing where you're just like, you guys aren't like in this, in this. Like you're just kind of a hall monitor, yeah, so you can you, like you're tattle just, on. People. You just want something to talk about too. Yeah. yeah. So there was a lot of like hall monitors just being like. Video games got way too many fucking tits, dude. <laughs> what a, it's, it's like the dorkiest thing to do ever. Yeah, it was like it's just a bunch of dorky girls. It's like dudes trying to like peacock like feminism yeah. for pussy. You yeah, know what I mean? and then uh, and then it was also a mix of two. There was like one of the spearheads of Gamergate was like <laughs> they found out she was. Oh, it, I forget exactly what it was because I think people claim she was like uh, she was like giving out pussy for access or some shit. I don't know how true that Who was. was. This? I don't remember her name. Um, she, she was just one of those girls where you're just like, oh, you're going to be annoying if I'm myself around you. <laughs> you Yo, know? What, is it, what was she, though? Like a streamer? I missed that part. Uh, oh, sorry. She, sorry. Yeah, she. Uh, I forget if she made, like, she was like a, 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 a game journalist, like did reviews oh, okay. and stuff. But then they also found out that um, there was, like, a bunch of these journalists that were, like, locked into the system of, like, gaming journalism where they would get, they would get, easy or early access to stuff by giving good reviews and gamers are just like yo i'm gonna spend a hundred hours playing this game also it's fucking like 60 70 bucks 
Like from like, there's a lot of gamers that that's a lot of money for them. Put some tits in. I'm it gonna us. put and also don't give me a dog shit review that's lying to me because it's like yeah. I'm spending a lot of money on these fucking games because it's not that they're just like 60, 70 bucks up front. It's that every fucking game has a battle pass and then every game like 2K is skins and yeah, all this bullshit. Every, yeah, every game has skins and battle passes and they're all they're all like secretly. They're like they're all subtly pay to win. They're not overtly pay to win, but if you don't pay to fucking get in the mix, you're just gonna be shit out on the game. Yeah. And so they were like making gaming just fucking lame as fuck. And then they were coming at some of these women who were journalists. And, you know, gamers have gamer brain. So they're just going <laughs> to like they're just like autistic oh. adult, adult brain. Yeah, it's the same brain that when you're in an Xbox lobby and you're mad about the game and then you're like, did, uh, did, did I hear a black guy talking? I'm going to say I'm going to say the N-word to upset him. It's the same kind of brain that they have, so they were just saying the meanest, most sexist uh, shit to okay, these girls. Okay. You know, not good, but it's also like you got to understand it on a broader but yeah, it was just a whole fucking mess and I still think there's residual from that because I just yeah. I don't feel like there's tits in games anymore. I feel like I feel like First of all, I feel like there's more women in gaming than ever were when I was growing up. Like, there's more there female gamers nowadays, which I think is cool. But I, I'd i be pressed to say, if you did a survey, do chicks want to see characters with big tits or small tits? You I know? mean, every, isn't it, isn't it kind of like this, like this? Every chick I've ever met is obsessed with titties. Right. Like, do, like, why don't we get the females in on this? Why don't we survey, you know what I mean, yeah. and see what women want? In the That would be the real, the real feminist well, way to do it, dude. Because I bet you they would opt for tits. Well, it's because everyone, like... Everyone loves tits. I, it, let, me, let me get on my bullshit real quick. Dude, you're, this is all about your bullshit. Oh, because it's, it's, it's people... <laughs> so, like... Have you been seeing the stuff where I don't know if you saw, it, but there's like the stuff where uh, Trump right now is trying to, and I'll bring this all around. Just trust okay, me. Okay. Like uh, <laughs> Sorry, <right. laughs> I'm just trying to set it up properly. But like, do you, do you hear that? Like, they would do this to uh, Joe Biden whenever he would, uh, whenever he would put forth like a uh, socialist leaning policy, and Trump's trying to do it to Kamala Harris right now, where he's just basically calling her a commie, right. and he's like, no, classic move. Yeah, and it's like, no, no, no. Dude, Kamala Harris is not a fucking commie. She's a, she's a sock puppet. She's like yeah. what? She's in there going like, "What do you want me to do? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just give me a bunch of money and I'll do whatever you want yeah, me to exactly. do. I will do whatever." Um, <laughs> so like you know, there's these because people like people think big businesses hate the government. They love the government because they go to the government. They get the government to. Uh, put forth certain laws that benefit them and hurt their competition. And they do it under the guise of like, oh, it's just for safety and it's stuff. It's good for the people. Like Heinz Ketchup. Heinz Ketchup <laughs> did that back in the day during the progressive era where they go uh, they go and lobby the government for all these food safety rules. And then when they implement the rules, all of their competition was now operating illegally and it cost them too much money to Genius. operate legally. That That's why whenever I hear people are just like, big businesses lo uh, uh, hate the government. It, and I'm like, no, they no, work with they the government fucking, to fuck other businesses. They fucking love them because the big, big businesses hate competition, and the government helps them get rid of their competition. So wait, hi, I know I'm sorry to derail for just a second, but Heinz, you have to explain this for a minute. So they just went, you know what? It's not it's not safe anymore the way that we're making. We need to make it safer. Yeah. So they yeah they implement they they help lobby they lobbied with the government like in the 30s or 20s or 30s. Um, they lobbied with the government about all these different food safety rules. And then it was, um, once they implemented all those rules, a vast majority of their competition was operating illegally. That's hilarious. And it cost them too much money to operate legally. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, it's why, like, like big business, they act like big businesses hate minimum wage. They love minimum wage. They're like, because, like, McDonald's can pay everyone 20, 25 bucks. Yeah. Uh, but, like, mom and pop places can't do that all the fucking time. So they're going to be forced to close or some shit. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, but, uh... Bringing it back to fuck, I got too far off. Uh, we we talked about gaming. We went from tits and games, surveying tits and games, and then uh, you went to Donald Trump, and you said you were going to bring it all back. I shouldn't have derailed you. No, it's all good. We were talking about tits and games. Oh, oh, I remember where I was going with that. So, like, relating it to they call so like Kamala Harris will put forth these like like socialist like communist type policies. And people think like, oh, they're a bunch of they're a bunch of commies in the government. I just go, no, they're a bunch of whores. So, 
these people who want to put forth those policies because they help like control people um those policies help control people it like that's how they get in there. It's not that fucking Joe Biden's a communist. It's right. that people... He's just a brainless People know puppet. these, like... Or a socialist or whatever. It's like people know these socialist policies can help give people control. So there's a bunch of stuff like that just, like, seeping into the culture. Mm -hmm. And basically what was going on was... Because the problem with, like, socialism is it makes you bitch about shit that's not a problem. So, like, it's all about class structure. Every, everyone's con everyone conceives everything in oppressor and oppressed. And so that's where, like, you have a lot of these, like, gamer girls and shit like that that were getting, like, irritated. Like, no one was upset about tits and games. <laughs> and no one was upset about tits and games fucking ever. And then you see these girls who, like, they get into the mix and they're just looking for a problem. Because it's not that there's not a problem. It's right. that there's a problem you just haven't found it yet. Yeah. That's like what they do. That's why everything's like racist now is that's like, like critical race theory. People do that shit where it's just like, it's there. It's not, it's not if it's racist, it's, it's racist. <laughs> you just have to figure it out. You just gotta find it. Yeah. So then, so what happens is, you know, all the true believers, cause they're fucking dorks and they are unimpressive. So they just want to get their shit all around and they get that shit out there. So basically what happens, it seeps into the real world, which basically A to B to C equals uh, an Indian guy who grew up rich in fucking Kentucky gets mad when some random white lady who doesn't know any better goes, where are you from? You know what I mean? <laughs> it's not that big of a problem. But because because all that seeped into his dumb head, now that Indian guy's getting fucking pissed off over fucking nothing. Right. You know what I mean? So they got pissed off about gamer tits because somebody planted the they were, seed. They it, plant somebody up, some bored nerd planted the seed. Because they were looking for a problem. They right. were looking for, so they go, they go, tits and games, that's probably uh, being demeaning to women. When in actuality, it's like, it probably gets more women in games. <laughs> And also, too, it's like every fucking game I play now, it's all just women wearing a fucking turtleneck. And you're like, that's boring game design. <laughs> Bro, and also, too, it's just like... Bring yeah. back Dead or Alive level tits. Well, and also, if you look at the fucking... Like, anime is the best example. If you look at the fucking guys in anime, they're all dressed like sluts. Like, everyone's dressed like a slut. Yeah, Goku. It's not just the girls. When the shirt comes off, and he's yeah. all fucking... Like, he's all beat up from the battle, but he's yeah. ripped and jacked, and yeah, yeah. it's hot. Yeah, but it's just like, I mean, so they have that like oppressor oppressed mindset. So it's like when they see big fat titties, it's like, you can't just like my big fat titties. <laughs> You're using my big fat titties to oppress me. Right. Yeah. And it's just like, no, I mean, the tits rule in her character format is awesome. Like, I like her game. I like her move set. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what the, that's the real root of the problem here. That's why I'm pissed. I liked her moves. Yeah. That's the problem. It's like, I don't want to just be one of those, like, fucking Daily Wire conservative pussies who's like, communism is everywhere. But, like, when you look at it from a, like, uh, or, like, socialism's everywhere or whatever. But, like, if it's it's all that, um, what is it called? Like, critical, uh, like, cultural, it's called, like, cultural Marxism. Because, like, if you look at any of those dudes. So dumb about all that stuff. It's okay. You, it's, you know, it's, yeah. It's fine. It's all very gay. I mean, the very gay stuff. <laughs> it doesn't help. It doesn't help you to know any of that shit. I mean, it, it does. It does, and it does. it depends on Gives where you, you want are. to talk about. Yeah, like if if I'm yelling this shit at the creek, it doesn't help. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you're sitting at the creek, just thinking about fucking someone Marxism. I wish someone asked me about cultural Marxism. <laughs> <laughs> but no, what what happens is like the thing people don't talk about with a lot of these like socialist dudes is like they're like they say a bunch of nice things. Like, socialism to me is, like, it's a lot of people going, like, wouldn't that be nice? Mm -hmm. And then you go, but then you need to have the other person involved where they go, yeah, but this is, like, our budget, and this is uh, reality. <laughs> right. And You know what I mean? Because, um, like, I always look at, I think, like, the Democrat, this is why I like being a libertarian, because I think Democrats are mom, Republicans are dad. Dude, yeah. I've Demo thought about this before. Democrats are mom, Republicans are dad, and libertarians are your mechanic. And libertarians, like, because mom's like, well, what if we got a car for every kid and I want all the safety features and <laughs> da, da, da. And then dad's just like, well, fuck, no, when I was younger. Who's going to pay for this? Yeah, when I was younger, I didn't even have a seatbelt. And I, my, I don't want my kids being fucking pussies and shit like that. <laughs> and da, so they meet in the, and the libertarian is in the middle because they're fucking autistic dorks who understand economics and shit and all that shit. And they're like, well, how much money do you have? 
And, well, you know, what do you, okay, this is what you can do. Because <laughs> people always prescribe, like, motive and a lot of, like, intense morality to, like, libertarian theory and shit like that. And it's literally just like, no, I'm just letting you know what you can do with what you have. Right. <laughs> That's like and a how lot we of can it. fucking get what get what each person wants the most. Yeah, it's like and meet know, in the fucking middle. It's like, in my opinion, it's also a proper understanding of like rights and property rights and stuff. But in a broad sense, it's literally just more like, what's your budget? <laughs> <laughs> Libertarianism is like, what's your budget? This is what we can do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dude, I've never, I never understood the. The fucking allure with the po politics shit, especially now, it's like when all this stuff is, to me, when the election season shit starts ramping up, I'm like, oh, here we go. Everyone's going to be- Everyone's going to get gay Everyone's going to get fucking annoying as yeah. shit right now. And yeah. that's kind of where I'm at right now. There, And I feel like it's just kind of heating up. Like, this is like the press conference for like a fight right now. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's I just kind of getting heat. And it's just- That's actually what I so like- about dumb. That's what I like about Austin. I don't- yeah. I couldn't tell you anyone's political beliefs so, here. Someone told me this. And like, I like, I kind of love that. Yeah. Right after I moved here, it was like somebody that was has lived here for a long time or is from here. It's like, Austin's great because it's a place where everyone disagrees with each other and that they can all be friends. Yeah. And I feel like that's kind of, like, there's a to ton of people that disagree about a ton of different shit and we're all friends and it's all cool. Well, yeah, just uh, uh, statistically, it has to be like that. We'd have to, like, there has to be so, there's probably a bunch of shit you and me disagree on. But like, probably. I think uh, I like. I know. Um, I don't think tits should be in video games. From, <laughs> <laughs> uh, from yeah, just like talking to people I've been around here, like what we bond over is like comedy and the, all the great food here and just Art shit. Yeah, food different shit. things we like. I I like that a lot because my only um, my only interest in politics comes from me realizing like how much they control our day to day. Oh, because yeah. like I said, I'm a real like. Bro, just, like, don't worry. Like, leave me alone. Yeah. Like, stop fucking... Like, I, I, yeah, I was... I was going to bring up a thing that I'm like, yeah, that's too many revealing information. <laughs> <pieces."> um, <laughs> But, no, you ever have you ever have the fucking... Um, you ever have the fucking friend that's, like, they, they, they pretend like they're coming at you about a thing and they're trying to act like they care about you, but they're just, like, prying a little bit too much? Like, what's happening doesn't affect them. But they're like getting a little too invested in your own thing. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of that from from Portland, dude. Honestly, yeah. like there's a lot of the because it's very tribal politi politically there. Yeah. So if you have any disagree, like you know, with the whole COVID thing and and then the election happening right after that, there was a lot of like like there every day. It's like you hate Trump, right? Yeah, you hate Trump, right? You hear what Trump said. You hate you disagree with him, right? And you're like, uh, like let me. Look at it first, and then they're like, "There's," Dude. and then by the time you're like, I'm, "Let me look, let me fi try to figure out how I feel about this." There's like a there's like a new thing. They're like, yeah. "No, no, 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 stop, stop looking into that old thing." Here's, can you believe he said this? Well, and, 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 that's and then and then the 2020 thing happens, and you're kind of like, "Okay, no, this whole thing is fucking weird." Yeah, let me figure this shit out real quick. You know, and, and then that, there's just that's know. why I hate about the political shit too, because it like warps people's brains. Because yeah. there's like there's I've had moments with certain certain friends where they'll say a thing. And like I remember hearing a friend uh, big up Trump on something, and then it like I kind of just I had a moment because I had a moment to myself where I just kind of paused and I was just like, oh, I remember you being a fucking dick because you thought I was gonna vote for Trump, and right. it like really yeah, yeah. mattered to you. And but it's like I don't I try not to I try not to take that shit personally. You can't do a gotcha either. Because well, yeah. then you're kind of just as bad. Because then as... you look like a psycho. Yeah. Because you're like, oh, you were actually a hypocrite because of something six years ago. Yeah. <laughs> but it is, um, like, I try not to take any of that shit personally because it can, can kind of, like, eat at you and, like, make you a fucking cunt. But, like, at the same time, it is, it is frustrating. Oh, no, that's what I was going to say. It is, like, you do remember back... Um, <coughs> you know, people get... But you got to be aware of that shit so you don't get caught up like i know it's like I, I i shouldn't take it personally but at the same time it was like you got a lot of you guys got real sketched when yeah when trump got elected a lot of you guys got real sketched because i remember the vibe if like dude got, <laughs> their like, eyes just went black like fucking hamster gerbil eyes well dude i remember you know what i mean i remember one time because like when trump regurgitating shit on the when dude. when trump got elected the first time the bit like one of the main things they would do with trump is he would say something uh, that he was just, he was a little sloppy with, and then they would extrapolate like way too much out of that. So it would be this thing where you're like, I'm not saying Trump's not a dickhead. I'm just saying 
what you're saying about him right now is inaccurate. Yeah, he didn't actually say that or mean that. Yeah, exactly. But then you look like you're like trying to defend this guy who's kind of retarded. Like yeah. I don't want to be defending I've, that dude ever. Well, but but then but then it's like okay, but sometimes it's like you're blatantly putting words or yeah. you know meeting that wasn't and there I behind something. I never he said. I never like don't get me wrong, Trump's hilarious. But like as a politician, I never fucked with the dude. But there would you just see countless times where you're like, oh, you're lying about that. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're, and then you're drink then the people are drinking the Kool-Aid. Your homies are drinking the Kool-Aid. And I remember I had I had this one friend. We were uh we were chilling at his place. We we're like, you know, it was a, a birthday party for his kid or something like that. And then we were like out back around the bonfire. And then we were just doing like he brought up something about Trump. And I go, Oh, actually he didn't actually say that. And then I remember he like pauses and he goes, Wait a minute. He was like, Ew, bro. No, he goes, do you like Trump? <laughs> and it was like the fucking, like the energy in his voice. I remember, like, cause like, yeah, I remember the energy in his voice. I was like, the fuck was that? <laughs> like man? you're in Dawn of the Dead and they think you got bit. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's just like, and that's why, that's actually what I fucking hate about politics. Cause I, like, I, um, I remember so many, so many people I knew got fucking, uh, you know, so, you know, just caught up in a tizzy over this shit or just got their, like, sort of perception warped on everything where they would, they just, like, they let, you know, whoever the fuck it was, whoever it was, like, the deep state or the propaganda or the corporations pushing the message and this and that, whoever the fuck it was, they really got you, like, warped in the head where it's, like, you'd start to distrust your family over their opinion on a politician. Yeah. It's like Trump did that. And, like, fucking COVID did that. And it was just, like... Well, and it did it so much on each side where, like, the left... The people on the left were, like, <clears throat> believing literally anything that the mainstream media or their favorite, you know, pudnant would say. Yeah, and then on the... And then, and then on the right, they're going full... <laughs> no, <laughs> QAnon, QAnon fucking psycho, dude. That, that's... I, and then I'm in the middle. And, dude, like, you can't be in the middle, really, publicly in a place... Like Portland, at least you couldn't. It might be better now. I don't know. I haven't been there, but like during yeah. like the 2020 shit, if you were in the middle on anything, you're just all the way over here. Yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, I I, can't, I heard uh, Portland was like that. I heard fucking like California was really like that. Like during uh, COVID, they were calling the cops on people doing shows and shit. Oh yeah. And they were like, "There's people there who don't aren't vaccinated." And oh, there's, there's, all there's kinds too many of shit people like at a fucking show. And it's like. We went that, out of town to play shows in Texas because shit was open here, and people were well, people were talking shit about us sneak dissing online. Like some bands like to go to Texas and play shows. Well, dude, let me ask like, you. Fuck you, dude. Everybody, let, everything's open over there. Let me ask you this, because you're like in a band. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're both musicians, but you're like you're in a band. Um, and you were saying about playing shows there and then. Or just in general, like that was a just absolute no no. There's no way yeah. we would have played a show there. But yo, then. wasn't it like fucking crazy? Because like everyone gets into, so many people get into like music like we like, like hardcore right. and deathcore and punk <laughs> rock and shit like that. Because it's like you just you're super anti-establishment. Oh, dude, yes. And then I just started noticing every fucking like punk band I've ever loved so is now. just spouting off everything that the establishment wants you to do. Yes. And it's like all these punk bands are like, you're not a good person if you don't listen to everything Joe Biden says. If you don't get vaccinated. And I say I'm not saying you can't agree with Joe Biden ever. I'm sure you guys both like chicken parm. You know what I mean? Like. <laughs> Dude, that well, was the thing. That I'm was sure the you thing. guys both like vanilla soft serve. That was the thing he said during. It was. It was like during Christmas. They like. They're like. All right. Let's ask the president. And they just asked him like, "What have you been eating, buddy?" I got chicken parm. I got chicken parm. I got ice cream, and it was really good. And they're like, "Yes, it was." It's like my grandma telling us what she had the, at the retirement home that day. Yeah, yeah. Dude, we got exactly. a new. We got a new cook. He's really good. But yeah, I just noticed all these. Fl it made me hate so many bands. Yes, one hundred and twenty percent. I've talked about it on here before like randy blythe like i love lamb of god you know they're fucking yeah. sick and they're one of the ogs but like he went on he went he has some tweets that did not age well brother about the vaccine he's like my friends are doctors and i know and you you know what i mean all this stuff and it's yeah. gonna work and like don't come don't you, you know you some shit like you don't be a fan if you're not a you know which i i understand or whatever he he believes what he's gonna believe but it's just like dude you're gonna make it about 
the fans and like come to your shit. You should just be like, do what you want to do, you know. But at that time, Rogan was saying, hey, do what you want to do. But here's what yeah. I'm gonna do, and that didn't work out. You know, it's just weird. I just I drew, I grew up listening to music, and it was like Rock Against Bush. The Republicans right. are fucking crazy, but then magically. You know, Matt, you know, it was just always like being weary of government and shit it like that. It went too far down that lane and yeah. it became tribal. Because yeah. it should be like basically, I feel like if you're going to write about politics, you need to be like criticizing it. You know what I mean? Or if you're going to, if you're, if you're a band and you're going to be political at all, it should be polit it should be criticizing everything. Well, I think my, my problem with it is not even like, it's not even like people with shitty opinions. I don't care about that. It's it's how intolerant everyone it seems everyone is now of having like opposite opinions. Like the quote unquote wrong <laughs> opinion. You know what I mean? Do you like, want to be on the right side of history? Like I've seen I've seen some uh, I've seen some bands with like, oh, they've had, you know, the controversial opinion of like maybe you don't let uh <laughs> <laughs> Maybe don't let biological men compete in women's sports. You know what right. I mean? That outrageous fucking wild opinion. But then it's like the way that they react. It's not just like, well, I disagree with that. It's, oh, uh, we need to obliterate them from spaces. We need to get them fucking lose their record contract. It's the, but, like they want to like, it, ironically, they want to like, it feels like they want to unlive un -alive them or like dead name them almost. <laughs> dude, it's like, why are bands speaking about this though? Write a fucking song, dude. Why are we talking about women? At I would never in a million years fucking yeah. open my mouth about, you know, that at like, f at least from the band. Like sure. the band's not going to be like, sure. bystanders releasing a statement. I don't think uh, trans people should compete compete in women's yeah. sports. You know Why are you I mean? talking what about the that? Fuck? Write a song, you dumbass. Yeah, fair you know enough. I mean? Yeah. It's like and so it's like that's why it's like if you're gonna my rule is like if if we're gonna write if I'm gonna write a song that's like ambiguously about the political fucking yeah. you know shit that's going on, it's gonna be just criticizing how fucked up and dumb the whole thing is. What else? That 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 to me makes the most sense. And, and it's not just playing the fence. It's like, that's how I feel about it. And so I guess that'd be different if maybe I was on one side or the other. But it's like, I just write about how fucking crazy all of it makes me. No, and it turns fair. you into a psychopath. Yeah. And like, like I went down, like, right before COVID and during through all that, I went down the whole conspiracy rabbit hole of all this stuff and like you know being in portland where i just feel like everyone around me is all the people are not my friends my close friends but like like all this general population around me is like so indoctrinated you feel like alone yeah so i was like writing shit about that you know what i mean and like how if you open your mouth about this crazy can you go go far down far enough in the conspiracy rabbit hole and it just turns you into a crazy asshole that nobody likes oh there goes jeff again dude he's yeah. fucking he's got his tinfoil hat on you, you also I mean? lose like, you also uh lose perspective because like i love i love conspiracies yeah but like you you sort of like lose perspective and then um yeah it gets you kind of like well it, it gets you kind of like disconnected from what like living is because like a lot of conspiracy people they get caught up that's what happened with a lot of like QAnon people you get caught up in fighting the good fight and then you realize you're like I could never stop fighting the good fight if I want to and it's like yeah you know obviously I don't I don't like the government I wish we could uh, make it either better or fucking get rid of it you know what I mean like I don't I don't fuck with the government but also at the same time life's not life's not just about learning about conspiracies and screaming into a microphone and stuff. Life's yeah. also about like go fuck your wife, go eat some good food, hang out <laughs> with friends, watch football, like shit like that. You know what yeah. I mean? Have fun and then until you die. You know yeah. what I mean? Have a co yeah, it's like yeah, fucking fight the good fight and then go have some beers with some friends. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to be on 100% of the time. Well, cuz it's like odds are like I never I hate people who kind of go like, why would you even do that? It's too hard. Like something being too hard doesn't keep me from doing something. But also at the same time, like uh, like when I was much, like I, lo I still liked all the conspiracy shit, but I'm less in the pocket of like, we're going to fucking fix this. Because mm. you get to a point where you're like, where you're like, I probably won't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I don't, I want to, I don't want to like get to when I'm like fucking, 70 or 80 realized like oh i didn't fix it and also i didn't do anything right when i was so it's like you got to find that fucking balance i still yeah, exactly. i still think it's because i get i get emboldened by how fucked up the system is so and it's like i like to podcast so it's like i can talk about it on podcasts as much as people want to pay attention to it 
you know, but it's like you can only you can only do what you can do, and then you have to at a certain point you have to just like, you know, go fucking live your life. Well, it's funny, yeah. I mean, for anybody that watches this that listens to the band or whatever, that's what literally basically what the band's name is based on. Is like you can follow down this fucking conspiracy route, oh, wow. but you're just a bystander at the end of the day. Like that's yeah. that's that's kind of what we're because I, I wanted to write about conspiracy stuff a little bit sometimes, but it would be too. It's so easily cringe. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Writing about that kind of stuff. Well, I did write a song. Nobody probably knows this, but I wrote a song about Building Seven, like super let's ambi- go. super ambiguously called yeah. Office Fire that's on our first rules. EP, and it's like. It's fucking dope because it's like all I was like looking up facts about it and yeah. like how do we make this like ambiguous and cool and not cringe like you can't be like <laughs> the tower that didn't that a plane didn't hit you Dude, know what I mean what like, is it what is it for you that gets you hyped up over conspiracies because I don't like I don't, I don't know I mean honestly dude they <clears throat> they kind of went to it it was cooler when like it was just us and us and the boys watching Zeitgeist on Netflix getting yeah, high dude. as fuck you know what I mean like Zeitgeist, that was yes. that was so that was conspiracy it was almost like just it was wa- cool before everyone was doing it and I hate to be that guy that says some shit like that but it was it was totally <laughs> cool before before yeah, that it was it just, was tight you're just watching Zeitgeist be like yeah how did building 7 go down also I don't have to pay my income tax <laughs> yeah. yeah what the <laughs> hell what the fuck's going on wait a minute Rockefeller did what well you know, you know what got me with um, what got me with conspiracies is when I got to the stage of secret societies, and you realize like there are secret societies like Skull and Bones, um, and uh, I, I, don't I don't know what that is. That's ba- that that's uh, I'm not as deep as you, brother. What the fuck? I forget. It was Harvard. What what are the top Ivy League schools again? There's Harvard, Stanford, Stanford. I think it's Yale. Yale. I think it's like a secret society at Yale where and. If you look at it from their perspective, it makes sense. It's just, it's like a, it's like, it's any job would do this. It's a training program to like get, it's like they do that to get people set up. So when they go out in the world, cause they have like their own goals and shit of that. Cause if you look all these like high level people, like dude, the dude who invented basketballs in Skull and Bones, both of the George W. Bush and his dad were in Skull and Bones. What is it? A fucking pirate? Cl- yeah. Was it a fucking pirate club, dude? <laughs> dude I just fucking- I just have a flag in my head. Right- Arrgh, yeah, yeah fucking- it's fucking weird, dude. And like I, so I was like <laughs> I was reading into secret secret societies, and I realized like they're working on a timeline that just is. So- they're working on timelines that are so long. We're just like a a blip on the radar of their like plans that they want to do. So it, it, like you realize that and then it's like you you respect the your your insignificance in the world. It's like when you when you go hiking and you see a big mountain and you go, "Oh, I'm so small." Exactly. <laughs> I don't matter at all. You know, and I I don't want that to discourage people be like, "Yo, if you're fucking dope at a thing and you're, you know, speaking truth and all this other shit, do your thing." It's just it goes back to my original point where People get deep into that shit and they forget to live their life. Yeah, because I almost you're just a bystander. I almost got got like that. Yeah, so, I, so that's why I think about it all the time. Where it's like you still need time to like because all this stuff's important to me. But at the same time, like I mean, I gotta I'm gonna go watch wrestling, right? <laughs> and I'm gonna I'm gonna go to hardcore the thing, shows. The thing, and that, do sorry, that, shit. the thing that that I think removed took me to like take a step back from it or yeah. something. Not only was the like. Like, I was starting to really get into it and, like, learn all this stuff that, A, didn't matter. Like you said, I can't do anything about it. So, I, it, like, this this information doesn't do anything for you. Yeah. You can dig as deep as you want, and the info doesn't really help you that much. Yeah. It, other than, like, I'm awake. I'm yeah. fucking awake, bro. Yeah. Uh, but, and the other thing was I got really annoyed with some of my friends that were even more into it. That, like, whenever some whenever something happened in the world, they would go... What's the conspiracy on this? Yeah, you know, let me find the angle on it. And they go, nope, see, yeah, you see, Illuminati, yeah, easy. And you're like, dude, come on, not everything can be. It yeah. can't always be. You can entertain it, you know, for everything, but it's like what, going like immediately going to what's the conspiracy angle on this? Yeah. That's like the same thing to me as like seeing something that someone said in like politics and be like, what's the woke opinion of this? I'm gonna <laughs> align with that. You know what I mean? I th- I, for me, the way I look at it is, I think uh, I think the usefulness of it is like the reason these like secret organizations and the government and people like that, the reason they can do a lot of stuff that they do is because you buy into it. So, like, take 9-11 for an example. People people forget about 9-11. They think, like, 9-11 never happened. Forget. Yeah, then I, I, I say never forget it. But they forget how, like, us doing, like, 9-11... Uh, <laughs> 
I mean, maybe. <laughs> a <little> fruit, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's the real conspiracy, I don't know dude. Yet. <laughs> Panties did 9-11, dude. Oh, dude, I'd be so pissed. Oh, if I found out Lemaire did 9-11, I'd be so fucking mad at him. Um, you didn't get me in on that oil money, dickhead? Yeah, what the hell? That um, insurance policy, Nate? What the hell? But <laughs> Yeah, right? <laughs> Fuck it. Uh, neither of you guys called me. Neither of you guys told me not to get on a plane on 9-10. Yeah, what if I would have got on that fucking plane? It's so fucking funny. <laughs> Nate and LaMare did 9-11. <laughs> um, no, so, like, people forget with 9-11, they think, like, oh, 9-11 happened, and then on 9-12, we went over to Afghanistan and did all that shit. And it's like, no. no. It took them a year to, for, like, the corporate press to just be like, this is the shit, this is the shit. And I say corporate press, not mainstream media anymore, because they're not... You know, they're just, the, the 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 a lot of those news sources are just the work. CNNs and the Fox. News yeah, they're just stuff. working for who pays them. Yeah. Um, Pfizer. But, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but they so for like a year or so, a year plus, they were just pumping this rah rah America shit. Like we gotta go fuck up. You know, you see you see a brown person, we gotta fuck them up. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? They're just we gotta go to Afghanistan. They were just pumping it into the people's heads. So when they finally figured out how to go in there, everyone was like, "Hell yeah, let's go." You know, so that was my, that's like what I realized with this shit is it's like, I more, um, it's like that one, it's like the government's almost like that one friend you have. Oh, it's just, uh, uh, it's just uh, sirens. Uh, We're yeah. in the hood. <laughs> <laughs> it's it. The government's kind of like that one friend you have that's real good at talking shit. And he helps he, you forget that he don't, he doesn't know what he's doing. And I think the, like, what I think can benefit people is just by understanding, like, they're not there to help you. They don't know what they're fucking doing. They're fucking corporate whores just trying to, like, <laughs> just trying to make money for all these people. They don't have a personal agenda. Yeah, so it's like, I think if more people just woke up to, like, your power's illegitimate, then it would help out situations more what? so like then that. what do we even do? What do we even do when that happens? Well, it, I, th well I, think the prob I think the problem is the government, uh, the government sort of mentally beats you down into thinking you can't provide for yourself. Mm. And if people have, because people always want, what's the exact A to B to C to like, oh, if we didn't have a government, what would happen? I think what's a better mindset is just if people were more, in the mindset of like, I can figure this out for myself, you would then have uh, more people would sort of interact in a more beneficial way. You know what I mean? Where I don't know. It's well, and it's they, a and tall they, and they like are constantly trying to make you more reliant on them or whatever. Yeah, you just use electric cars. Well, cause, like well, because like think think about it with like little little shit. Like you know, they, they they trick you like they trick you into being like, well, you know, what would we do without the post office? It's like. We figure it out. <laughs> Email. <laughs> yeah, they you know get rid what I mean. That shit immediately. Yeah, that, Amazon. But Jeff, Jeff's got it. Governments. <laughs> governments really good at like beating people into submission and making them think they can't like provide for themselves and they can't figure it out for themselves and shit like that. And I just think if we had, you know, that's a tall fucking order. But if we had more of a mindset of that, we wouldn't be so dependent and reliant like on that, them. like people farming in their backyard. Yeah. Well, not. <laughs> Not even necessarily that just um if the, if like um i'm trying to think of like a good example it's like okay it's literally it's like living with mom and dad and so you're like if your mom just does all your laundry for you you're just like yeah my clothes get clean well now you moved out and you're like it's like if you were sitting there going like why are my clothes clean yet and you're like oh yeah mom's not here and then you're like oh fuck so I got to figure that out. I either got to get a washer dryer or go take it to the fucking laundromat or something like that. I just think people have sort of put themselves in a like a mental crutch in like that heavy reliance on them. Yeah. And they don't because like I see a lot of people talk about it wherever like because they're always they'll, they'll like identify that like government's the problem. But then they'll always go back to like, well, then they got to they got to solve the fucking problem. Right. And if they didn't create that sort of crutch and reliance it would make them be more uh i don't know what the word would be like it would just make them like uh figure it out for themselves a yeah, little bit they better. would have to be more resourceful yeah and also yeah. but also too i know a lot of people are pro a lot of people are probably rolling my rolling their eyes at this i know there's also like huge entities of shit i basically i think it's people just got to get better at identifying the bad guys you know what i mean like 
you know, it's like that boyfriend that just keeps beating you, and it's like he'll stop eventually. It's like no, 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 he's not gonna. You gotta leave him. The good <laughs> you know? times were so good. Yeah, it's like when people get, it's like when people get mad at fucking certain like Hollywood actors. Mm. You're like, dude, just if they're not acting, just ignore them. Like, stop giving them power. Yeah. By, like, expecting more from them. You shouldn't expect more from them. You shouldn't expect more from McDonald's. You shouldn't <laughs> expect more from these people. You know what I mean? Like, that's so... You should be more... It's like people are not... There's a lot of... This is going to sound corny, but there's, like, a lot of wolves in sheep clothing that people just need to be better at identifying who the wolves are. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about the uh, <clears throat> the, the Trump assassination attempt? Fake? Totally fake. Like, that's one of those things, like, let me look at the conspiracy on this. You know what um, I mean? Like, what's... like, I think he got shot. Okay. Yeah. Do you think he got I, shot? I mean, I mean, I don't know. I saw... I, s- I'm not, I'm not like, going to say no. You know what I mean? I I think the, the, the more I am alive, I'm just, and the more shit happens, that's just ridiculous. And, yeah. and both sides of it are so, like, saying he had a fucking ketchup packet in his hand or, like, yeah. what, whatever people are saying, it just seems so ridiculous. Well, no, I think, but I think it's... But it's like, but I don't, I don't know what the, I don't know, I haven't looked into it enough what people think is the conspiracy well, people, on that. People, and this goes back to similar shit where it's like, do you guys just forget how Trump is? Like, they saw the bandage afterwards and all this other shit, and then they, like, showed a picture of his ear, and they're like, his ear looks pretty good. Doesn't look like it got shot. And it's like, yeah, he probably milked it. He probably, like, barely got hit. Yeah. And he probably barely got hit, because you saw in the video, it got, like, you hear, like, pop, 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 and he literally has this reaction, like, what the fuck was that? You know what yeah. I mean? If it, 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 it probably barely hit him, and then he and then he went down. Like, oh, I'm getting shot at. But it just seems so crazy. I get why the conspiracy got because it's like yeah. the more you're breaking it down right now, the yeah. crazier it is that he did, his head didn't explode like a watermelon well, on here's, fucking live television. Here's what um, here's what I think happened more so than like I think he got shot and shot at and shit like that. What I think more so happened. Is if you watch all the if you watch all the stuff where they're talking to the Secret Service because Trump um, they basically gave him like the fucking I don't know sports terms really well they gave him like the JV squad and normally <laughs> they gave him the the bench the bench warmer uh, yeah, yeah yeah they gave him fucking uh, uh, John Heater and <laughs> yeah, David Spade Nick, and, and Nick Swartzen yeah and Nick Swartzen <laughs> those were so those were his Secret Service detail the Three they, Stooges and also in situations like that. They're spo- I, from what I heard, they're supposed to have more than what they had. So he had the fucking D squad. He was understaffed. Um, there were people who like were they're like, "There's a guy over there," and there were people who are identifying stuff. Ten minutes before the speech, they knew that there was a possible threat, and they still sent him out there. So I think a reasonable theory, and I hope this doesn't get your video fucked. I think a reasonable theory. We're just talking about theories. I don't yeah, it's theory. I don't believe it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're definitely getting a uh, Wikipedia article for context under <laughs> yeah. this. That's, that's, Fact check. You brought me on, dude. I'm sorry. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> it was but. last minute, dude. You're just you're pulling from the. You're like, fuck. What can I talk about? Uh, here's the, all, all the conspiracies I believe in. Yeah, wholeheartedly. But no, I'm what, just kidding. The be- like, I think the. The the most gracious the most gracious version you can give is that everyone in the Secret Service that day was retarded. Yeah. But the more nefarious version is like feels like they might have let it happen. But yeah. I don't those are like the two options. I'm not completely sure. I'm not like super deep on it. Like some of the people I follow and stuff like that. But yeah, it feels like best case scenario, they were all it was and that's what's hard about with like a lot of the stuff with government is you go, best case scenario, it's like unreal incompetence. Worst case scenario, you're all the evilest motherfuckers in the world. <laughs> I just feel like planning to like perfectly not kill him but shoot him would be so hard and so impossible. But well, be- like I think um, it's under the water cooler in the drawer, Tony, in the file cabinet. I think Sorry. like no, you good. I think like a uh, failed op is fair because if you think there's a lot of benefit for the uh the machine or the establishment or whatever there's a lot of benefit for getting him out of there because what people don't realize is like people go to trump's track record and they big up him for they go to trump's track record they big up him for not starting any new wars which is good but if you look at all the like shit he implemented it's all just like a bunch of like the best stuff he did was like a bunch of okay small stuff yeah, but I don't like, feel like any politician if it's like 
yeah, America was what cheaper to live yeah. when he was president, but it's like how much of that was him? But, I don't I don't know. I don't know the ins and outs of that. Yeah, you know? but it's like if if he did anything good, it was like a bunch of small stuff. You know what I mean? He lowered yeah. some people's taxes and shit like that. <laughs> Yo, it is crazy but, to go on to go on national television <laughs> as Kamala Harris right now and go the dynamics works. Like yeah. what we like Psychotic. everything's fucking awesome right now, You're like, guys. Everything's, You're like, what the hell? Everything's so fucking expensive, you fucking <laughs> yeah, idiot. Yeah, what the fuck? But I think what uh I think what uh I think Trump what what scared the like machine and the establishment about Trump is politics forever has essentially been like wrestling. And I say and when I say that I mean like you watch wrestling and oh it's good guy versus it's good guy versus bad guy, but it's all like predetermined. So that's what they will always be giving you with politicians where you know, they'd be different. There's a heel and a fucking hero, right? But if you look at, like, the substance of the politician, they'd, all, they'd always give you, like, two sides where, you know, they'd have, like, the inconsequential shit that they didn't fucking give a shit about where they'd be, like, 180 on. So, like, excuse me. So, like, abort. <laughs> I, I, I had a polar pop, dude. Senator, I have my time. <laughs> so, like. You would see there, – there's certain issues politicians can be 180 on, like abortion and stuff. Because it's like, dude, the machine doesn't give a fuck if you're killing babies or keeping them or not. They don't give a fuck. But when it comes to war or it comes to, like, you know, tax rates, you got people arguing over, like, well, it should be – it shouldn't be 35 percent. It should be 33 percent. And, like, that's how you can argue over it. But it was always, like – it was always like wrestling where we're going to get our big things at the end of the day. Like if you look at the track record, like Democrats and Republicans are still going to war the same way. What scared him about Trump is like Trump was in the context of politics. I know he's a billionaire, but in the context of politics, he's like an outside entity. And right. Trump basically, they were like, oh, we have this rigged system. And Trump was like, I'm still going to get in there. And they're like, no, you're fucking not. And, but he did. And what they got, what Trump scared them is they realized like, oh, like it's going to be hard, but you can't, if you're not, if you're not in the, you know, it's like if a dude, it's like if uh, WWE was doing a show and then a dude from AEW just kind of showed up and put himself in the show and then he got the belt somehow. Yeah. They're all freaking out. Go, how the fuck did he get the belt? Yeah. That's what they're afraid about with – that's what they don't like about Trump. He represents <laughs> that. So it's – I mean, I'm not saying they did, but it's in their interest to take him out. You know. Wait a minute. Do you like Trump? Fucking love him, dude. <laughs> Top to bottom, everything about him. But it's <laughs> – it's in their interest. It's in their interest to take Trump out. Yeah. Um, so because like, like they love they love having everyone scared so they can like slowly take away your freedoms. Like the best example I always love to bring up is you know the Oklahoma City bombing. Yeah. So Oklahoma City bombing happens. That's where the dude took the rider Timothy truck. Timothy McVeigh. Timothy McVeigh takes the rider truck full to of the, fertilizer. Full of fertilizer in the Murr building. You know, one, parks it next to the daycare. One medium sized rider truck full of like 20, uh, 55 gallon drums and, you know, blows half of a gigantic building up. All, at the daycare center. Yeah, at the date. Killed fucking like so many kids. And, you know, the, a the ATF just happened to not be there that day. They had an office <laughs> in the building and they, it was somebody's birthday. Every, Jean's got cake. Yeah. Every, Dude, li dude, literally, they said they were like, you know, they were out late doing an exercise. No one has to come into the office. Just conveniently that day. Yeah, sleep in. But I don't believe in conspiracies. Right. Um, but no, so Oklahoma City happens, and then the next day, Clinton goes on the news, and he's like, this is why we need stricter gun control. And however you feel about gun control, you go, he had bombs in his truck, not guns, Bill. The yeah. fuck you? Because it's like they see a crisis. They see a crisis, um, and then they capitalize on it. That's why it's like, I don't know, at, at the end of the day, it's like irrelevant if 9-11 uh, was an inside job or not to a certain, I mean, it's interesting, you want to know the truth, but it's like irrelevant after a certain point, because you're like, they got what they wanted, whether it was pre-planned or they reacted like that. It's actually scarier if they reacted that way. And yeah. they, um, but uh, but, uh, but it would just seem so thing, he had it ready to go. That's the thing with, but that's the thing with Trump where, because they've been stoking this thing about like right wing terrorists and militias and shit like that for a fucking while. You know, like ever since Jan 6 and um, um, Charlottesville and shit like that, they're getting you worried about like right wing uh, terrorist groups what coming was Charlottesville up. again? The like Tiki Torch thing? Yeah, Tiki Torch thing. Okay. They will not replace us. Uh, 
Yeah, they were like mad about. Man, you went deep. They got you good, dude. Yeah, I'm you fucking went deep for a while. Don't worry, dude. Dude, I had you on here because I thought you're funny, dude. Not because I thought you were so, Alex Jones. Then I'm woke the fuck up. Yeah, you're fucking awake, bro. I'm red. I didn't take one pill. I took the whole bottle, I motherfucker. Took the, whole, the whole fucking. I'm red bottle. But the 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 last thing on Trump is like, <laughs> it does benefit them to like. I will say this: it does benefit them to take him out because then a lot like people will see Trump will get taken out, and then they can, that'll cause hysteria. It'll probably get a bunch of right wing dudes with guns riled up. They'll be going out doing. They'll shit. look bad, and then it'll justify creating a bigger police state and being because like most normal people see that they're like, yeah, they're scary. Take them out, and they won't see like the broader context of why it happened. But I think I it, it feels like. It's just a stroke of luck that at the last second Trump did this. He did like his patented little dude. Literally, he did he, one of his little patented. He moves. had he had like um, projectors behind him bringing up like immigration stats. Yeah, dude. Oh my god. So like yeah, and like someone was like, he's like, yeah, bring it up. He's like, wait, where is that? Oh yeah, that one. And then he turned a little bit farther and yeah. it like nicked his did ear. Did you watch the interview with Theo? Theo Vaughn? Theo Vaughn and no. Trump. Dude, there's a part when he talks about the, the graph, and he's like, we were looking at a graph. It was my one of my favorite graphs. It's a graph I always bring. It's a great graph. He dude, literally said all those things like it's a great graph. It's crazy. And he goes, he and I turned my head. That. I turned my head, and it was amazing that I turned my head. I turned my head the perfect amount. This is perfect amount. Not too little, not too much. I turned my head the perfect amount. Sidebar, you know, Taylor, like, you have a amazing Trump. <laughs> dude, I don't even like to do it because 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 your homeboy fucking, you know, yeah, it's kind of sh- it down. It's, it's kind of Shane's it's, now. Yeah, it's kind of Shane's now. And, and and any runoff that Shane doesn't have is Tyler Fisher's. Yeah. You know what I mean? So he, like, Tyler Fisher cleaned up the scraps, basically. Shane's is, like, too good, too. Yeah. It's, it's like, it's like that, because he, he doesn't just have the impression down. Yeah. Like, did you watch any of the Kill Tony shit? When oh, he yeah. was on, yeah. yeah, yeah like, yeah. when he, when he riffs, you're almost like, yeah, if Trump was more of a comedian. He has the speech patterns down. Yeah, he like he he riffs in the thought process of Trump. It's obviously yeah. like a little bit more exaggerated, but he riffs in the thought process. It's like, yeah, that's Shane's. Shane's yeah. got that. He owns that. Yeah, yeah, actually, Tyler, what's his last Fisher. name? Fisher. Yeah, dude, he, uh, He's there's, there's that really funny clip where uh, he was about to do RFK on Rogan, and, like, Rogan was like, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. So fucking funny. But Want to no. hear my RFK? And he's like, no. But you, usually when <laughs> people, friend. usually when people, do, <laughs> it's like, he's actually a good friend. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, dude, why wouldn't he want to hear it still? It was, I, he got, like, five seconds of it out, and yeah. I was like, Jesus fucking, because most people do, like, they o- they do it over the top and they're like and they make him yeah. sound like retarded My skeletor. RFK, he sounds like this. Yeah, but like, I think he sounds kind of like this. Tyler Fisher's was like on crazy on point. On point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I don't know. Funny. It's all Dude, you know what I wish I was thinking about the other day cuz there's been a lot of 9/11 talk on this podcast today, dude. Yep. And I love it, dude. But uh you know what I've been thinking about speaking of 9/11 is I want like a like a alternate reality if I could like if I could like have like an alternate reality for a day kind of thing, you know yeah. what I mean? Um, I want to. I want like a couple weeks of life in a reality where George Bush is president when we have the technology that we have now with the smartphones and social media. Because I think that that would be so funny, dude. Mm-hmm. Like he, we're he's so lucky that he missed the meme. The he missed the the meme era because some of the shit that he said, dude. Some of his greatest hits, get, dude. Like yeah. he did get like TV, Wait, how old are you? Television memed. I'm 33. Oh, okay, we're the same age. Yeah, then. he, he well, got I'm 34, he, but he got like memed by the by the news. Just you know what I mean, yeah, like and, 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 people, and by like by like the pop culture, by comedians and stuff on like talk that. Talk shows and shit. Talk shows and stuff, dude. And, but, but if, if Twitter was around bro, for George W. Bush, oh my god, he get dusted. Oh my god, dude. Yeah, he says like one of his quotes is like, uh, "Mothers is where families take flight." <laughs> where wings take dream. Well, dude, he, he said where wings take dream. He has one of the one of the best ones where he's just like what the one where he's golfing. I forget yeah, exactly yeah, here, what we, he can said. We, can we pull it up, Tony? Can we pull yeah, up? Uh, can we pull up? It, it's uh, now. Now watch this drive. Yeah, that's what he says. Because he just hits. Make he sure hit. the Bluetooth is connected. I think I disconnected it earlier. To the roadcaster too. Yeah, it's a solid. It's a solid bit where he just says like, "We fucking took these terrors out." Now watch this drive. Yeah. And then you have to turn the slider up once. But yeah, uh, now watch this drive. G Dub, G Dub will get dusted by Twitter. Dude, G Dub would have been would be so dusted by Twitter. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. The memes would be so epic, dude. And the like, oh man. Cause he was just like the bro. Oh, you might have to hit it, unclick it, and then click it again, Tony, on the Bluetooth. Sorry, this fucking thing. We should have had this ready. That was my bad. Player should be good now. Yeah, give it a rewind. <laughs> She's so funny looking, dude. Oh yeah, he's. He's just like, I'm trying to get this. I'm trying to. Oh, you want to turn the Bluetooth slider up? Is it up? Uh, we might. It's like, dude, he, he, he was just so interrupted while golfing. He's like, I got to get this over with. Yeah. Oh, fuck. We got nothing. Yeah. Typical me move, dude. Not having the audio ready. It's Come on, good, dude. dude. No uh, worries. They know it. Look it's it all right. Up. He'll fix it. Yeah, look it up. But yeah, dude, if he would have existed when fucking Reddit was around. Yeah. Oh, there we go. We got it. To stop these terrorists yeah. upon all nations to do everything they can to stop these terrorist killers. Turn it up a little bit. Thank, Thank you. you. Now watch this drive. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, and honestly, Boom. like. Straight down the middle. Oh, it's straight <laughs> down <laughs> the middle. <laughs> Now, a, a dude like that's honestly a little bit more dangerous than, like, a guy, like, that's why, uh, like, a guy like Biden, who he's not, well, he has the handicap of being dead for the past three years, but, like, Biden, like, the, the problem with uh, G-Dub was he was so likable, because, like, even being the, even being, like, the dumb one, yeah, like, you know, he just killed so many Middle Easterners and shit, he still seems like he'd be a solid hang. And his dad was like the one of the most evil guys in in recent history, right? Yeah, he like ran the CIA and shit. Well, he's he like, wasn't there weird Nazi ties to him or some weird shit oh, dude, too? I mean, there's, it probably goes so deep. Dude, we could do we could do fucking five more episodes about the Nazi ties to shit <laughs> with the government, dude. That's what I was. Uh, I just finished up this audiobook about this dude, Alan Dulles, who was, like, the first director of the CIA. And it's, like, dude, it's a long book. And, like, the first four or five chapters are just about, like, the first two chapters are, like, he loved the Nazis. Who, <laughs> <laughs> George Bush? No, no, Alan oh. Dulles, oh, Alan in, Dulles. The, in the CIA is, like, he loved the Nazis. And yeah. then, like, the next couple chapters are, like, no, he, no. here's all the Nazis he helped at the Nuremberg trials. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And then you have, like, uh... I think it was Operation Paperclip because, like, I was just talking to a comic about this the other night. Shout out uh, Chandler. I forget his last name, but I love him so much. With the long hair and the glasses? Yeah, Chandler. He's cool as fuck. Yeah, I'm really bad on names, but Chandler's the fucking man because we were talking about this shit the fucking other night. And I was like, thank you. I was like, I haven't had, yeah. I, haven't had, I, haven't had I haven't found someone to spaz on this stuff with. <laughs> so he's like my favorite person so in all. You are just sitting at Creek going, man, I wish somebody would ask me about the Nuremberg trials right no, now. No, I'm, I'm down to talk. Like, if you, like, when LaMare comes up to me and is like, let's talk about wrestling, I'm the same energy on wrestling. Wrestling, when I'm doing my shit with Mike Eaton and we're talking about food, I'm the same shit on food. Yeah. But it's like, get me going on like conspiracies and shit like that. I'm like, let's fucking go. Yeah. But um, I've been waiting for this. Yeah, wait. Well, oh, oh, that, <clears throat> yeah, it was like operate. Yeah, oh, we were joking about this with like Operation Paperclip mm -hmm. is where they got all the like, it was the process to get like all the Nazi scientists over here and like in NASA and shit like that. Yeah. And it's basically like, yeah, you know, they're the most evil group of dudes ever, but they were the best at science. Like, that's how, like, the Nazi party uh, rose up. They were just, they were good at figuring out how to, like, r control a government. You it's know what I mean? a bunch of Jew-hating dorks. Yeah, because well, they weren't, um, they, the Nazi party was not the, like, majority opinion when they first came out. But they, like, got into government and they figured out how to, like, rig everything to help them out. And then eventually over time, when they just got bigger, more people just, like, got on board and shit like that. But also at the same time, like, the other reason they were able to just fucking go into France and fucking butt fuck them and fuck up Poland and shit like that is they just had better shit. And they just were, like, better at doing all that stuff. And also, France, the France was funny because they just had the whole army methed up. They had them on, like, super ultra meth. And so they just, they were just relentless on france for like three days straight and france is like oh no like we're like what are we doing we can't do this uh but yeah like we were after world war ii our government was like damn their scientists are fucking good they're evil yeah. they're evil but they're fucking good so they got them over here and like yeah there's just been yeah it's it's always funny when the government is like 
you know, they're like, we're worried about Nazis and white nationalists. It's like, you guys have fucking loved Nazis forever. <laughs> you lying fucks. You lying fucks. Yeah. Yeah. You've been on, you've been on Team Nazi for yeah. decades. You've been big up in the Z's for a while, dude. <laughs> Funniest, uh, do you remember the one Super Bowl commercial when Volkswagen was like, they did a commercial talking about their, like, history and whatever? And they just so happened to start their history around, like, 46 or 47. <laughs> right. Like, you guys were a company before that. What'd you do before that? Yeah. What'd you do? Oh, oh, you, you left out the part in the Super Bowl commercial where you made all the cars for the Nazis <laughs> and shit. But even with the cars, like, the Volkswagen's a dope car. You yeah. know what I mean? And then, like, Hugo Boss made all the uniforms. And, like, they were sick. And, you know, you kind of got to, like, look left or right. But you're like, I mean, the outfits were kind of cool, dude. Yo, take that thing <laughs> off your arm. You guys Yo, fucking suck, but those outfits are, aren't are bad. Yo, take that weird shape thing off your arm, dude. Dude, you know what the funniest thing about? Um, Everything else will be fine. I, I'm listening to this one audiobook, The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich. Mm. And the one thing that keeps popping up is that they were all, like, in like embedded in the Nazi party, they were all just like rampant homosexual deviants, <laughs> just with like doing the weird. And then you hear that, and then you look at Hitler, and there's like these like the funniest pictures of Hitler is when he's like not in uniform, when he's just chilling in his leader hosen, and he just looks like a pudgy. Like you know those dudes, are, he's like a skinny fat dork, and then he like. He talks about like the master race, and it's always like blonde hair, blue eyes, Aryan who's so fucking yeah. tall and jacked. And if he hung out, he'd be like, "I'm cool too." <laughs> and like, and then you look at Hitler, and he was just like, dude, he's just like a failed dweeb, art, yeah, just a failed artist dork who fucking like had a shitty haircut, and he like looked dumb, and he looked like a little bitch. He got and molested shit. Like, when yeah. he was young. Yeah, and it's like, oh, Pussy. It's, no, yeah. I'm just <laughs> And it's like, oh, yeah, it's like your fucking, your uh, master race Ubermensch is just some dude you want to fill you up. <laughs> Fuck it. And you're like, oh, yeah. Hitler was just an evil gay dude. <laughs> that's hilarious, dude. Nah, dude, that, you see that a lot in government. It's like, that's why it's, that's why um, acceptance of gay people fucking rules. Cause it's like, there's so many, there's so many evil closeted gay dudes in the oh, government. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, I think that's, like the closeted gay dude could can has the propensity to be like the evilest entity. Why is that? that there's so many of these like old like lawmaker dudes in suits that just want to get filled up, <laughs> just, just want to get their ass plugged and I don't know suck what it, cock. Why is that? I don't know what it is. It could be like some sort of well, because like, if you think about it, think about if like your it's if your existence is reprehensible to like mass of society. You're going to want to get into a position of power to change everyone's perception or, like, get back at them. So I think, like, you know, is, like, th yeah, I think that's why a lot of, like, fucking closeted, nasty closeted gay dudes, like, get into government and shit like that. I don't know. I, yeah, I, I don't know. It's just the thing I've been thinking on and stuff. But, like, dude, like, back in the... It's thinking kinda, about nasty closeted gay dudes. Thinking about nasty gays. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do when I sit at home. That's what I you're doing. Like, what are nasty gays up to You're right rocking now. back and forth at those plastic chairs with holes in them at Creek going, God, I just wish somebody would ask me about nasty <sighs> closeted gay men. How many of you out here are <laughs> nasty gays? <laughs> nah, dude. Uh, no, because, like, it's, it's not me hating on gays. Like, I no. fucking... The, the gays that just, like, let it ride... You know what I mean? They're like the funnest we're, fucking dudes. We're talking about the gay dudes that go to court hearings to try and pass laws that yeah. that are ne negatively affect gay people. Oh, like, dude. I gotta <laughs> but they're secretly also gay. That's so weird. I gotta tell you, I met the sickest gay dude at Maggie Mays the other night. Nice. Last night I was doing a set, and I have this joke about pride where I go like, yeah. I basically like, it's, it's becoming a lot. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. where you see, you'll see, like, there'll be, like, dudes in assless chaps. This right. is the part of the joke I do where I go, there's dudes in assless. I literally saw a video of this dude in assless chaps was, like, walking his dog slave. And I go, what's that part? Like, what? Like that's, yeah. maybe you <laughs> who's, stay. Who's proud about that? Maybe you stay home, weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you doing, dude? Um, and then I, I, I bring up, I bring up pride. I go, you guys, like, pride out here. And there's just, like, you know, just. The dude ruled, flaming motherfucker. Yeah, he was no, he was in the front, like oh. And I was like, you don't like pride, dude. He was just like, nice, that's perfect. He goes, I gotta tell you, I'm probably the worst gay ever. Nice, <laughs> love hearing that. And I go, what does that mean? He's like, I'm the gayest guy you'll ever meet, 
but I'm also the most homophobic guy you'll and then ever you're like, meet. You're like, this guy's my friend immediately. Yeah, and I was juggling. I was like, hell yeah, dude, me too. <laughs> <laughs> And then I was like, you want to hang out later and yell slurs? And he was like, I'd love it. <laughs> Dude, that <laughs> guy's like, awesome. Guy what a legend. Rules. Was but the no. crowd freaking out at Maggie Mays? Or uh, was it just you and him having a conversation in a the, silent room? It was actually a bummer because, like, you don't normally... I love Maggie Mays, but you don't normally see it fucking packed. Right. Because I think they had, like, a Longhorns game yesterday. Yeah. So there were, like, people out. And it was packed, but, like, back of the room didn't really give a shit. Front of the room was, like, mixed. And then eventually I got him. But, yeah, it was, like, the front of the room were vibing out with that gay dude. Nice. But, no, I think it just stems from people, like, living a lie. It's not even, like, I know we're joking, but it's not even, like, centric on gay people. No. It's, like, it's people living a lie yeah. that end up can create, like, you know what I mean? Like, you ever just, like have a fucking secret you know you don't like or you don't want to hold on to or whatever and, and you want to like when you're actively trying to hide it it like turns you into a nastier person you know what i mean i don't know like have you ever cheated on a girl no i did that i did once in like college and i remember like i i, I cheated on this girl and then i just sure remember dude like <laughs> I'm actually like a decent boyfriend if I cheat on you cuz you just get surprised with gifts every month <laughs> cuz I just I uh yeah I You're just, just pushing down the pain. I would just randomly like feel bad about it and I would yeah. just be like, "Oh, I got you flowers." <laughs> Oh my god, you're so sweet. But yeah, no, I remember just like Which, and you've been with your girl for a long time now, right? About a decade. Are you guys yeah. married officially or no? Yeah, we've okay. been married for like six years. Nice. I just don't my finger got fucked up and I don't wear my ring because it doesn't fit anymore. By fucked up, do you mean bigger, Andy? No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> No, I got uh I got my hand caught in a, a metal rolling gate at work. Oh fuck. And it like annihilated this pinky and like kind of fucked up the skin on here. And then my ring never fit after that. And I just, I also just don't like rings. I think they're yeah. annoying to wear all day. I'll still, if we're going out to like a nice dinner or meeting, like hanging out with like normal people, I'll wear it or whatever. Yeah. But I also noticed too, you get more chicks fucking bothering you if you wear a ring. Really? Yeah. Not that I'm like, I got too many chicks bothering me. <laughs> really? <dude? laughs> yeah. I'm not sure though. I think. I think there's been times where girls flirt with me and I just don't notice it because yeah. I'm not trying. And I don't want to sound like a fucking cornball, but it's like I don't I don't spend my time trying to like get other chicks' attention and shit like that. I spend zero percent of my time. Yeah, yeah, so I just don't I don't like fucking notice it. Yeah, it's crazy. Not I, a lot of people can relate to us on that. Yeah, because uh, we've been I've been with my girl for eleven years. Yeah, and so and <laughs> eleven faithful years. Fuck Andy. Andy. No, I'm just kidding. I only I only cheated the one time in college. And you I learned your lesson. I didn't like it. And I was like, I'm I not, didn't like it. I did not like it. I gotta be honest. I didn't like it. It wasn't fun. It wasn't fun after. It felt bad. Yeah. Um, but no, like uh what was I gonna say? Oh, but uh the the whole being with your the, like I actually fucking wrote some of it down about this to talk about this kind of subject, but it was like cause cause we've been in the same we're in that same boat, and it's like, dude, when the homies are out on the hunt. Their eyes just like glaze over. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you're just like, dude. Yeah, like shit. when your single friends like, yeah. oh, I'm so excited to get fucking pussy. Yeah. I go, that's so exhausting. Yeah. I said this, I think I said this on panties recently. Like, all the pussy I've gotten has gotten me. I don't get, like, I don't, yeah, it's gotten me. Pussy's been like, would you like to be inside me? And I go, I would love to, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I've never, not, not saying never, but like the fucking. The chase. Well, like, I remember in college, it would be like a, uh, and this was different times when uh, fucking Me Tooing was still cool. Uh, but, <laughs> 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 but no, for real, there was like a thing of like, it was almost like a, uh, what was it? It almost felt like you're fucking a, like David Blaine, where you're just like, just like, hold out, hold out. If I just like, if I stay at this bar long enough, some chick will fuck, or I'll find yeah. a chick that I can fuck or whatever the right. fuck. Like, and I was like... Bro, just pretending some random drunk bitch at a bar is interesting just to yeah. hope hopes that they'll fuck them. And then you get them back, and that's, like, a whole fucking thing. And then you have to try to, like, see if you can get them to leave or they, or you got to deal with it in the morning. Yeah. I go, that's all so <sighs> exhausting. And then I always, like, I you know, I, I could have used a little bit more in my, uh, in my rookie season, but... <laughs> I probably could have used a little bit more, but it always it always found its way to me enough, like uh, uh, fairly regularly, that I never I never questioned it. Dude, I, was just, I have a I have a I have a uh, 
like a weirdly low number of people I've had. I've only had sex with four people in my life. How many? Four. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I, I'm, and they've all been, they've all been like, uh, I was talking about this on the last episode with, with my homie, but it was like, they've all been like different, like the Goldilocks, like a girl yeah. that I like really liked that didn't want to be with me. And then a girl that I was like, it's like your first one with, yeah. well, I was in like a long term relationship. And then after yeah. that, it was like a girl that I like really didn't want to hang out with. And then a girl I really wanted to, she didn't want me to. And then I found one that was just right. You yeah. know what I mean? I, well, I basically, I didn't get a lot of pussy, bro. No, it's all good, dude. No, it's a flex. No, dude, pussy. Fucking... It's a flex, dude. I didn't get a lot of. It's pussy. actually, a, yeah, it's a flex What's now, up, dude. Well, no, <laughs> it's not I, a flex. Well, no, I, I know for me, it got to a point where I was like, oh yeah, I like checked all, I checked all the, not all of them, because uh, I really wish I would have had sex with a black lady. Just like yeah. seeing my my pink penis going in and out of black cheeks. Yeah, it would have been that such been a cool. sight to see. That would have been right. And also, I was a real. Uh, I re- this is another part of me. If I could, everyone always says, like, if you could talk to your younger self, I would just tell them, I'd be like, stop being so stingy. Like, fuck a big girl, dude. <laughs> like, mm. I, that's my other, that's my other, oh, and I never had sex with an Asian lady. But those are, <laughs> those are my only three. It's uh, like, yeah, I, pussy found me mostly. It was always fit white chicks. Yeah. Yeah, it's so weird. It's just f- the hottest oh. white girls just found me. It was was it always, it was, no, I, I, <laughs> I hate to no pussy bragging so fucking annoying, but I did. My friends would make jokes where they were like, "What the fuck do you do?" Because like yeah. my What's your secret, the ladies dude? I would get with the like the attraction disparity would be pretty uneven. And yeah. people would be like, "I was like, I don't know. I think I'm a good hang. <laughs> like I don't know. Like that's the thing people don't talk about in relationships. It's like." You're going to fuck for, like, a minuscule amount of time. Realistically, every week, you're going to, like, com- like percentage-wise. Compared to how long you're hanging. You're going to fuck a minuscule amount of time every week. So you got to be a good hang the rest of the time. Yeah. That was, like, why... That's why a lot of, like, you know, there's... Oh, so many beautiful, slutty whores. But, like, they're just, <laughs> like... I would see them, I'd be like, you're the worst... You have to be the worst hang. Oh, yeah. But, um... Yeah, no, I, like... I definitely the had my... crucial. I like I definitely had my fair share of like types of ladies. You know what I mean? Where you're like you personality know, types. Whole like wholesome girl with big titties, super slutty girl with big titties, the like the hot girl that is like you'd see, like the stupid hot girl you'd see at the club that is only gonna go for a dude in a Lamborghini and shit like that. And then the like trailer park skis, you know. Sh- I've 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 run the gamut. I've run the gamut in type in types. And then when I met the lady who ended up being my wife, I was like, "Oh, you're incredibly pretty. You're fun to you know have relations with. Love you, baby." And uh, I was like, "You're the you're like the sickest hang. You yeah, know what I mean?" So, 100. And that's yeah. how I feel too. Because yeah, I for- couldn't imagine like what you're saying. Just like the court the courting. Dude, it seems yeah. so crazy. It seems exhausting. I talk to some of my single friends, and I'm like, dude, this seems so fucking exhausting. They're also they're also happy to be getting pussy, but uh, clearly visibly unhappy. And they they're like, I don't know what's wrong with me, dude. Like, I just don't feel good or anything. But anyway, I got to get out of here. I'm gonna go fuck this girl from Tinder, and then we're never gonna speak again. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna have no no emotional connection. Well, it always I'm just, like yeah, it always oh, it's like the, that's your problem. The older I got, too, it just seemed like it's like. You know, I only have so much time every day, and I'm gonna make I'm gonna make the second half of my day suck ass so I could have a fun like let's be real like ten minutes with this chick, dude. I you couldn't know what Im- I, mean? I couldn't imagine penciling in pussy right now. Yeah, I couldn't imagine penciling penciling in the Wait, the, the grind for pussy right now. Well, yeah, let me ask nuts. Let me ask you this because I remember when I was in like high school, the biggest thing would be like uh, you want to like fuck for like half an hour to an hour. And now that I'm older and you kind of, like, know the moves and you know how to, like, you know how to beat the boss quicker. (laughs) (laughs) You're like, dog, if this goes past 10 minutes, I'm going to kill myself. She's going to be upset. She's going to be bored. I can't imagine. Like, I can't. I remember. Like, I remember one time. Yeah. Like, the first couple times I had sex, it was only, like, a couple minutes. Yeah. And then I remember one time. And then, you're, and then it's like you find out at some point you're gay if you're not lasting. Yeah, yeah. And then one time, I remember the first time I had sex for, like, uh, it was at, it was like the, because I had a girlfriend in high school, and we we did a bunch of, like, trial runs, and then eventually, at like, on the seventh or eighth time, I got, like, 40 minutes in. And I remember being so hyped about that. And if you told me, like, now, at 34, we're going to fuck for 40 minutes. 
<laughs> Yo, what? That's like we're that's gonna like, put Marvin Gaye on. That's like two episodes of One Piece, man. <laughs> There's gonna be oils. I'm wasting my time in this pussy, dude. <laughs> Hang on, baby. I gotta stream this. <laughs> uh, can we have, finish it up? I gotta beat the boss. Yeah, I'm about to. I'm about to 100 XCOM too. I only have one life left. My health <laughs> bar's low. My stamina bar's low. Nah, I just yeah. Sorry, I was about to get. I like. Too, I, I was like, about to get too honest. My wife doesn't like when I get in depth on our yeah. sex life. <laughs> that's why I talk. That's why uh, uh, I talk in euphemisms. Yeah. 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 I. Uh, Oh fuck! I forgot what I was gonna say. Um, there are I, there are things I think single dudes should get out of the way, because I think it's like because there's so many great things about a committed loving relationship, but also like make sure you get like roadhead before you do that. <laughs> yeah, because that's not that's not coming. yeah. Or like maybe like you know try to like ha- like fuck in public a couple times and stuff. Because it's like yeah, I, like pe- I I always try to tell people like if you have a good girl at their core, they're not gonna change after you get married. Yeah. But also let's be real, the percentage of married lady I'll speak vaguely. The percentage of married ladies giving roadhead. You're like <laughs> so make sure before you get married you get enough roadhead in. Right. And shit like that. <laughs> she can pull the dick out of her mouth to go, do you know where you're going? You yeah, know? Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, she's like, we're going to be late to your mother-in-law. <clears throat> or your mom. Yeah. <laughs> it's just not the same. Could yeah. you imagine, like, that pitch? Like, it's a Tuesday morning, and you're like, you're like, hey, honey, I've been thinking about it. And uh, <laughs> let's fuck in public tomorrow. Well, that that it's is like, where... No. That is where fucking does change. Because you got to be... Uh, you got to embrace, like, Making love, because yeah. make, making love can be pretty sick. It is you know, like the sick. end of Zach and Miri make a porno where they're just laying on each seen other. That in a long time. Yeah, at the very end when uh, Seth Rogen fucks uh, Elizabeth Banks, so sick. Which is just such fat guy booking for a movie. That's such. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was <laughs> oh, perfect. Elizabeth Banks, you're gonna let Seth Rogen put yeah. his putt in you. Yeah, um, that showed us all we could do it, dude. Yeah, it gave us all <laughs> inspiration. But no, at the at the end scene of that, it's just them like laying on. When they finally fuck, it's just them laying on top of each other, mm-hmm. just grinding stuff. Just normal. Yeah, and it's like, but like. People don't talk about it. like that can fucking rule. You know yeah. what I mean? Because it's like once you start, because I think when you're younger, you fuck based off of like highlights from porn, and yeah, you you, de- you fuck like depends. there's a camera in the corner. It depends on how much porn has destroyed your brain at that point. Yeah, yeah, and you, you I feel like yes, yeah, fair enough. At least for me, because like nowadays with all the choking stuff that I'm hearing about. Oh yeah, you know, like well, dude, did I tell you? I didn't. I don't know if I talked about this on panties or not, but I realized. I I didn't sign up for OnlyFans for a while, and then there was this like there was this one chick I kept seeing on Instagram that I could always like look up on uh, Reddit her shit on Reddit, and then eventually that like wasn't on Reddit, and I was in a very vulnerable horny moment, <laughs> so I broke and I got her I got her OnlyFans and I started watching it, and like this chick's one of the top OnlyFans creator, and she like makes her own content and she like fucks in it and shit like that. So, but you got to assume, like, if she's making her own content, she's fucking how she wants to fuck. Yeah. And it was always very, like, meat and potatoes, like, standard fucking. And then I was just like, you're not doing any of the, like, wild shit. And then you realize, you're like, oh, oh. It made me, like, realize how, like, fucking unnecessarily aggressive most porn is. Yeah. Because you're like, oh, yeah, she. this is how she's fucking in these videos, how she wants to fuck. And then you realize, like, that's where, like, porn's, like, really fucked up. Because you start to realize, like, if you watch, like, if you watch a lot of the, I don't know if mainstream's the right word, but, like, a lot of the big porn websites, you start realizing they use the same general amount of dudes. And then pair that up with, there's a guy usually directing it. (laughs) So I realized this, I was like, damn, I was like, damn, you're, like, if you're letting porn influence how you want to fuck chicks... You're literally letting, like, 20 guys, <laughs> like, dictate how you fuck chicks. It's the gayest thing ever. Because you're just like, oh, because I started realizing that when I was like, you start seeing the same dudes pop up, and you're like, am I just fucking based off of these, like, couple performers and yeah. shit like that? And you're like, God. And that's when you realize, like, I always say, people try to go, like, no fap. I go, no, that'll 
drive you insane. That'll turn you into a person that nobody wants to be around. Yeah, it's, I, I'm a big proponent of maintenance fabs. Maintenance fabs. Maintenance fabs. You know what I mean? Because it's like, you know. Dude, you have to do it. People have to do it on the road, dude. Sometimes you have to tell your boy, hey, you need to go into Planet Fitness right now. You fucking rub one out, dude. You're being a dickhead. Or you get your buddy being like, how long are you going to be out? Yeah. I don't know. I if If I don't. Well, that was like that was the funny thing when me and Nate went to Raleigh, where we realized like, oh shit, and that's when we realized we were like addicted because we were there for like two days total. Like we got there Friday, left uh, Sunday morning, but it was like about two days total, and we both kind of like had that moment where we're like, oh, we can't jerk off for two days. <laughs> and then even like the bathroom, I hate when hotels do this. The fucking the door to the bathroom was just one of those sliding oh, doors, yeah. which just makes shitting and stuff we because it's like. I'm not, I need to have like the plastic strip and the door shut, and right. I need to hear like chunk on the fucking yeah. door when the it shit, shuts. The shit smells gonna seep through these fucking two yeah. pieces of wood on rollers. Yeah, and it's just like that's not enough separation. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, fucking jerking it that weekend wasn't even remotely a fucking and consideration. You were stressing about it. No, it was. Yeah. We made it. We made it. Don't worry. It's not like we like fucking broke and just started making out one night. <laughs> I just need Nate, please. I just need to bust. <laughs> no, but we were like, oh, that's so funny that it was like the thought popped into both of our heads. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, no. My rule of thumb is like jerking off's fine. Maybe try not to watch the violent shit. Yeah, yeah maybe occasionally because I've been with girls that like to get choked and slapped around and stuff like that. Yeah. Like girls like that. This seems to be a level of normal with that stuff. But there's but like there's a point of that's just like what? There's a lot of the violent shit that is just like, are you mad at her? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know. I watched I've never been into that. Like I was, I watched like there's some of those websites that are just based around like. Uh, head and like fuck, they'll be called like throated or something like that. <laughs> and I watched the one, and it literally starts with like the guy like like grabs her throat, and then he's just like yeah yeah, and like aggressively, f and then he like threw her at the wall. And I was like, hey, dude, like what are you doing, man? <laughs> Yo, chill. Yeah, it was, they're they're ridiculous. Some of those are literally just. That's when you got to realize, like, some of those porn websites are literally just a guy yeah. getting out his weird fetishes. Like, there was, there's one where the dude, it was like, you know, how there's like all those websites where it's like the girl's first, like, clearly this is like one of, you're watching her, one of her first 10. And there's, it'll just be in a dude's living room. And then the one, it was really creepy where they're like, <laughs> the lights like were off. And then, it, like, in the middle, you were doing the thing. I was doing the thing where you kind of, like, scroll ahead. Like, let's get to a moment that mm -hmm. would be a thing I'd want to do and whatever. <laughs> and then I just I just skip ahead, and he just has her in, like, a headlock. Oh, my God. I'm like, what is this, man? Like, this is, I don't know. Like, I'm, I, it, this, this, someone, maybe the guys who are, like, pedophile hunting should look for these guys. Like, yeah. look for dudes who are headlocking chicks a little bit and yeah, fucking shave a, their it's heads. It's a slippery slope from headlocking chicks to trying to get kids in your van. No, yeah, it's definitely, yeah, I would say definitely go away from the violent shit. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta piss really quick. Where are we at with time, Tony? Uh, Oh shit! You want to wrap this up, dude? Yeah, I'm down. Word, we could do. We should do another one. I feel like I could. I feel like I could talk to you for hours. Yeah, I can. That's yeah. I can yeah. You just fucking go. Uh, plug your shit real quick. Uh, I got a bunch of stuff. I'll keep it quick. Definitely. Uh, pain is in the mouth is the main podcast. But also, if you uh, if you like music, there's Drag the Lake. If you like conspiracies and uh, social talk, uh, no more heroes. I'm gonna eventually start a wrestling podcast with Lamare. But the other big one, I really want people to check out. Uh, I don't have a set schedule, but I do it pretty much every day. Twitch.tv slash Andy Malfrina. Turn bit. If you like the things I'm talking about and you want to see me play a turn based strategy game, fucking hang out with me. I'm having a lot of fun on Twitch. So twitch.tv slash Andy Malfrina. And you just started a new food podcast with Mike Eaton, too. Oh, Jesus. How many podcasts do I have? Too many. Yeah. Uh, uh, They're all quality. I could eat with Mike Eaton. Yeah. yeah. The, se the secret is I pair up with people who want to do a lot of work and then I just show up. <laughs> And yap, and yap. Oh, I go. Yeah. You got. You need someone to yap. I'll yap. And Mike Eaton was like, "Can you app and yap and eat?" And I was yeah. like, "Absolutely, Mike." For you, I thought you'd never ask for you anything. <laughs> but yeah, just uh, Andy Malfreen on Twitter. I got all the links for everything. Yeah. So comedy, food, music, conspiracies, gaming. I got too many podcasts. No, you don't. You're perfect, guys. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, go follow Andy. Support Andy. Watch Panties in the Mouth. We record pa Panties in the Mouth in the same studio. So uh, support the studio, support the pod, uh, like and subscribe and all that stuff. And we'll see you in the next one.
You are listening to Gorgas, you idiot.